This question is all about mechanics and especially 2D motion. We're told in this question that we have some sort of projectile and it's fired horizontally. So maybe I'll draw that. So something that goes out horizontally like this here and it'll follow that sort of path. It's follow, flowing off a cliff here. That's actually why I had this uh, in a unicorn with like projectile vomiting some uh, rainbows here. So we have this sort of 2D motion, but it's actually an easy version of it. And we'll see why in a second here. Normally what we would do is if we were given a speed, we would know that, uh, you know, like if it was up at an angle. In this case, it was easy because it was horizontal. But if it had been up at an angle, normally what we do is figure out Vx and Vy. In other words, we'd need to figure out the x component of the speed and the y component of the speed. But uh, because it is um, horizontal, then we, we can actually maybe determine this. Maybe we need to know that. But its initial vertical speed is actually zero. That's because it's horizontal here. So that's something that's important. Um, in Maybe we can split this up into sort of the horizontal world. So in the world of the horizontal, in other words, uh, straight across, we have uh, this equation, right, that the Vx, so in other words, the speed in the x direction, is equal to the displacement in the x direction over the time. Now there's no x direction for time, so we'll do it like this. Now we know that uh, this thing right here, we know that it lands two kilometers from the base. So that is actually s little x here, that's sx. So we know that equals two kilometers. And the time, we also know that, don't we? I mean, maybe we need to know that, but uh, we actually um, have the time that it takes, doesn't it? It takes four seconds. So from there, we could actually figure out V if we wanted to. Of course, we'd have to convert this and do it in meters or whatever, but uh, that's, that's what we have going on. However, um, we actually don't need this. Uh, by the way, the reason uh, why we just use Vx is Sx over T, that's because it's not accelerated. You know, this thing actually isn't accelerating. In the vertical direction, however, it is accelerating. So that's what's important here, okay? It is accelerating. So because of that, we need to use our accelerated motion equations. And uh, maybe it helps to write a little list of what we know. So I like to do U, V, A, S, and T. Some people like to do SUVAT, it doesn't matter. U is the initial speed. Keep in mind, these are all in the Y direction, okay? So U is the initial speed in the Y direction, which in this case is zero. V, which is the final speed in the Y direction, that's it just dropping straight down essentially. That's like the stone just drops straight down. Uh, we don't know this. We do know its acceleration though. Because it accelerates downwards, we can apply that to, a, we can say it's negative 9.81. Normally we would say that at least. Um, Sy, that's actually what we want to find. You see, that's actually what we want to find here. We want this, this is Sy. I guess this displacement in the Y direction. And time we might need to know, and we actually do know it's four. So it turns out this right here we can use. It turns out we didn't even need to know this two kilometers. So if we do this, away we go, we can actually solve for s. We need to find an equation that has this. By the way, um, because this is a paper one, you're not allowed a calculator, you can just call this minus 10, that's good enough. So let's actually consider then our equations of motion. Let's go find one. If you look in your data booklet, uh, you should be able to find one that has a s in it, um, that also has a u, an a, and a t. In this case of here, you might uh, remember it, I might have seen it before, um, it's s equals ut plus one half a t squared. That's the equation we're gonna use. So how do we actually do it? Well, we fill it in, right? So we know that sy, that's the one we're looking for, it equals ut, but u is zero. So thankfully that just canceled out. So it equals one half times a, which is minus 10, times t squared, so that's a four squared. That's not so bad then. Take a look at this, a minus 10 over two, what's that? That's minus five. And four squared is 16. All right, so we need to do this, right? We need to do uh, four squared times that. Um, that we could have done. Um, actually, you know what I think? It might have been actually easier to look at. You know what? Let me show you something. Here's what else we could have done. We could have actually just left it. We could have said minus 10 times 16. That's maybe easier because four times four is 16 times minus 10 over two. That's because 10 times minus 16 is minus 160. Divide that by two, it's a lot easier to look at. It's 80 meters. In other words, it goes down 80 meters. 
So then all we have to do is look for an answer that has that. And sure enough, we do. It's answer B. B is 80 meters. Phew. Again, lots of work for only uh, one mark, right? And there's no half marks. There's no marks for part work. So do be aware of this, that some of these questions are here can actually be pretty tough, especially mechanics. I have to warn you, actually, uh, a lot of the exams, it's actually mechanics, which looks like the easiest topic that actually has the hardest questions. This one isn't really that hard. It just takes time. This would have been better on a paper two, I think. But there we go. We solved it.